Good morning everyone. Uh, I am Nidhi Gupta from Department of Applied Sciences, JIET. Today we will discuss uh, the subject Engineering Physics in which we will discuss the topic Wave Optics. Uh, so let's begin with this topic. This lac lecture contain is why physic physics in engineering. So first of all, uh, if you are studying physics and engineering, then what is the logic and what is the use of physics in this field? So this is uh, the first contain. Second will be the scheme in engineering physics. Uh, what will be the scheme and what is the overview of the subject? Then concept of light, meaning of wave, meaning of interference, type of interference and various application used in engineering field. So first of all, we discussed that what is the significance of physics in the field of engineering. Engineering is a form of applied science with physics as an important part. So basically this engineering physics is the applied physics. Applied physics is the law or theorem which we can apply in engineering. Initially engineering started with mechanical and civil engineering as the main branches and both these streams are derivative of mechanics which in turn is a form of physics. So physics plays a vital role in engineering. Another major part of engineering is electrical engineering. This is a derivative of electrical physics since electrical engineering leads to electronics engineering and finally to computer engineering it can be concluded that the mother of all engineering branch is physics. Uh, other branches like biomedical engineering and biotechnology derived from biology also have thick line links with principle of molecular physics. Thus it is true that physics has a significant role in engineering. So it is we can say that it is used as a tool by engineers for application to real life things. Uh, we'll discuss later the various application. First of all, we discuss what is the scheme in first BTEC or first SEM. There are four lectures in a week and one tutorial. The examination time will be three hours and the total marks will be 200 in which two parts are there. One is the midterm which is of 40 marks and the end term which is 160 marks. This will be the syllabus. The code 1FY2-01 oblique 02 uh, for second semester and the various topics uh, we have divided the syllabus into six different modules. The first module is the important one which is all modules are important but, but first consists various topics like interference, diffraction, x-ray diffraction. So the first topic which is wave optics in which you will study about the Newton's ring, Michelson interferometer which is the uh, phenomena based on interference of light. Fraunhofer diffraction, diffraction grating, resolving power, all these topics are based on diffraction of light and last is x-ray diffraction XRD. Second is, second topic or second module is quantum mechanics which is uh, as we know that light has dual nature. The first nature is wave nature. So in wave optics we will discuss the wave nature of light and the second nature which is, which is the particle nature which we will discuss in the quantum mechanics. In this the wave particle duality, matter waves, wave function, basic postulates. Schrodinger equation, physical interpretation, application of Schrodinger equation, we'll all discuss in this chapter 2 or module 2, quantum mechanics. The third is coherence and optical fiber. Spatial and temporal coherence, uh, the visibility of coherence, why visibility is important uh, in terms of coherence, optical fiber, optical waveguide, numerical aperture, maximum angle of acceptance and various application we will discuss in this. The fourth important module is laser. So laser is nowadays widely used in various application. So we should know that what is the basic principle of laser. So we will discuss the principle, the types, various application in various field 
like medical field engineering field and sciences so we'll discuss all these application of laser the fifth contain the fifth uh, topic is material science and semiconductor physics in which we'll discuss the bonding uh, band theory conductivity hall effect and the last is introduction to electromagnetism in which various maxwell equations flow of energy pointing vector we'll discuss for uh, reference you can go for these books these are the suggested reading now this is the abc analysis of the subject we have divided this subject engineering physics into three categories three different categories first is category a which is easy the all topics included in this category is easy uh, for the lower average student the second category category b is moderate or average the average student can easily understand these topics and the third category which is category c is difficult and uh, we can more emphasis on these topics as it is little bit difficult to understand now we come to the wave optics wave optics as you know it is a branch of physics which deals with the uh, wave which deals with the uh, phenomena like refraction refraction interference diffraction polarization all wave nature of uh, light can be explained in this branch which is wave optics in wave optics as it is related with the light so first you should know what is light the concept of light as you can see uh, this is light so if i ask you what is light first you think yes we can see light in nature but how you will define this light so basically light is a form of energy we see light as color and brightness and actually if we define a light wave it is actually the electromagnetic wave <coughs> excuse me consisting of oscillating electric and magnetic field so light is an electromagnetic wave which consists both electric and magnetic field and it travels in straight line so light is form of energy basically which is an electromagnetic wave consisting electric and magnetic field so if we Uh, talking about light wave so what is wave something which is propagating is considered as wave uh, still thing is not uh, a con is not considered as a wave so wave is a disturbance or propagating disturbance in a medium of free space which travels progressively without the actual propagation of the medium so wave is considered whether it is light wave sound wave radio wave it is a propagating disturbance in medium of free space now for for brushing brushing up your uh, mind there is a quiz let us pause this video and think about this question the material that a wave travels through is called the amplitude medium refraction or compression think about this now these are the parameters of wave uh, just if we want to define some characteristic for a particular wave we need some parameters so what are those parameters first is frequency which is given by nu the time period t amplitude which is either a sometimes we use e also the wavelength again very important term which is lambda wave velocity the velocity is v velocity is v frequency is nu the important again important term is phase which is phase phase phi angular frequency is given by omega it is 2 pi 
न्यू प्रोपोगेशन कॉन्स्टेंट विच इज डिफाइंड एज टू पाए बाय लामडा सो ओमेगा एंड के बोथ कैन बी रिलेटेड एज अ वेव नेचर लाइक फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड वेव लेंथ intensity which is the square of the amplitude more is the amplitude more will be the intensity these all are the basic parameters basic attributes of a wave for a particular wave which we can use in further studies these are the definitions amplitude this is the maximum displacement of the particle of the medium from its equilibrium point the bigger the amplitude the more energy more intensity similarly wavelength is the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough this is like a wave is represented as a sine wave this is the sinusoidal wave which is representing a light wave in this if we say what is wavelength where the cycle repeats or the distance between two consecutive crests or trough this is lambda here it is this is lambda this is amplitude and if we square this amplitude this will give you the intensity the time period which is reciprocal of the frequency frequency is number of cycle per unit time wave speed the velocity wave velocity uh, wave velocity we can say in vacuum it is a constant which is given by c now there are two types of wave one is longitudinal wave and one is transverse wave what are these waves longitudinal waves are those waves in which motion of the particle is along the direction of propagation of wave an example of longitudinal wave is sound wave transverse wave if the motion of the particle vibration of the particle are perpendicular to the direction of propagation for example this is light wave which is traveling in x direction so light wave is considered as transverse wave because light wave is propagating along x direction and the electric field is in y direction the vibration of electric field is in y direction so both are perpendicular similarly if we say there are some magnetic field also so the magnetic field is in z direction so three are mutually perpendicular so light wave is considered as transverse wave in general to represent a light wave we use this equation which is called wave equation y which is the function of position and time position uh, we are considering the one dimensional motion so y is function of x comma t is equal to ym which is the maximum amplitude of the wave and sin kx minus omega t plus phi so to represent any wave we use this equation this equation uh, can be written as e is equal to e not sin kx minus omega t also so this is also electric field equation here we are using y is equal to ym or we can use e is equal to e not we are using electric field to represent any wave equation we don't use magnetic field there is a question for you dear student why we always use electric field part to represent any wave equation we don't consider the magnetic field part in any uh, derivation part in any uh, theory we don't use magnetic field part why x is position coordinate t is time coordinate k i have already mentioned 2 pi by lambda omega is 2 pi nu and phi is initial phase so again there is a question for you stop this video and think about this 
which of the following is not a type of electromagnetic wave red light gamma radiation sound wave radio wave so out of these one is not an electromagnetic wave what is that Now we come to the principle of superposition which will be discussed in interference of light. Like in wave optics, the first topic is Newton's ring. But before starting Newton's ring, you should know all the wave properties, all the principles. Then you can start with Newton's ring and Michelson interferometer. So what is the principle of superposition? The principle of superposition is state that when two or more light waves superpose in a certain region, the resultant displacement will be the sum or the vector sum of the displacement due to individual wave. If waves are traveling in same direction, it will be the algebraic sum. But if waves are traveling in different direction, then it will be the vector sum. So the resultant displacement will be the sum of all these individual ones. Here y1, y2, y2. Y3 are displacement produced by the individual waves and y, the, y is the resultant displacement. So now we discuss what is interference of light. Interference of light for the Hindi medium student, uh, it is called Vyati Karan. Vyati Karan, Prakash ka Vyati Karan. Hindi medium student ne Prakash ka Vyati Karan padha hai. But humara jo ab mode hai, medium hai, wo English rahega. To hume ye pata hai ki Prakash ka Vyati Karan kya hota hai. But hume yaha par ye samajna hai. What is interference of light? To interference of light basically simply if we state that when two or more waves under certain condition, not all the waves. Under certain condition means they must be having same frequency. Strictly same frequency or wavelength having a constant phase difference zero phase difference either or it should be constant traveling in almost same direction having nearly same or same amplitude when these type of waves are superimposed in a certain reason then the resultant intensity is not uniformly distributed you can see if you are sitting in a room particularly if you are having two light sources there are two light waves. They are superposing but you cannot see any interference pattern in that room. Interference pattern means a dark, bright, dark, bright. This tarah ka jo pattern hota hai, it is called the interference pattern or fringe pattern. So you cannot see any pattern because that ordinary waves in room light, they uh, are not satisfying these conditions which are necessary to obtain a sustained interference pattern. So if these light waves satisfying these conditions what conditions the same frequency constant phase difference traveling almost in same direction and one is amplitude are nearly same so when these conditions are satisfied then only we can see the redistribution of the energy there is the shifting of energy from one place to another from bright place to dark place and we can see the interference pattern. This phenomena is known as interference of light. So how many type of interference do you know? One is constructive interference and second is destructive interference. Constructive interference is when two light waves are superposed under these conditions and having the same phase. Same phase means like if one wave is like this and another wave is also like this. Crush, crush, trough, trough. If there are other waves superposed, ho rahi hai, then they will produce constructive interference and the resultant will be the more intensity, more amplitude. This is. The more amplitude, more intensity will be there. If this is the intensity, consider I1. This is I2. Resultant will be the sum I1 plus I2. Destructive interference where the two waves 
are in opposite phase one is like this and second is suppose dotted one and this will produce destructive the intensity will be minimized so constructive interference when they superpose having the same phase and destructive this is yes this is the diagram you can see the pink and blue two waves are there they are in same phase this one this is constructive interference this is destructive interference this is also the uh, and the result you can see the result is the maximum amplitude and in this the result is the minimum amplitude and this is some but somewhat having the uh, different amplitude different phase and the result is like this these are the condition for destructive and for constructive interference the part difference must be n lambda you should know that the part difference must be n lambda for constructive interference and for destructive interference the part difference must be n plus half into lambda it may be n plus minus half in n plus half or n minus half n plus half lambda means you have to define n from 0 1 2 3 and so on and n minus half if you use then n will start from 1 2 3 and so on so if we say there is a dark fringe so is there any loss of energy in interference no there is no loss of energy there is only the redistribution of energy from dark region is shifted to bright region what are cohen sources again in simple ordinary light source no interference pattern can be seen because these sources are incoherent so coherent sources are needed to produce an interference pattern and what is the meaning of coherent source the coherence is a phase related concept and if there is a constant phase difference between the light emitted from these sources is constant then the source is considered as coherent source again if we are taking two independent sources exactly same in all manner and we want an interference pattern from these sources we can see this interference pattern no two independent sources cannot be coherent because the uh, there is the random emission of light and there is the random phases of wave emitted from these sources and these independent sources even they are in uh, even they are uh, same in all manner but they cannot produce any interference pattern so how can we produce the coherent sources practically so practically we can produce coherent sources using a single source and there are only two method by which we can produce two coherent sources from a single source the first method is division of wavefront and the second method of division of amplitude the division of amplitude method will use in uh, further topics like newton's ring and michelson interferometer division of wavefront you have already studied in 11th and 12th in young's double slit fresnel biprism so we are using division of amplitude to produce two coherent sources so there are some condition for sustained interference to achieve a well defined well patterned observable interference these conditions must be satisfied the first important essential condition the two interfering sources must be coherent the interfering wave should have the same or nearly same should have equal or nearly we can say not exactly equal but nearly equal the two waves must be propagate in same direction if they both are traveling in opposite direction how they will superpose so they must be traveling almost in same direction the separation between two sources uh, which we are using for interference must be as small as possible the two sources must be narrow and the interfering waves must be polarized these are some applications like anti reflection coating and this will use the interference principle of interference the destructive interference is used to reduce this glare 
you can see without anti reflection coating there is some glare and in anti reflected coated glass there is a smooth vision this is interference pattern observed in newton's rings newton's rings are also used in glass industries where the optical smoothness can be checked so these are various application which we'll discuss in uh, next classes laser laser cutting laser drilling laser welding and mechan in mechanical engineering will use this is the hologram camera 3d picture is generated using the highly coherent source like laser so this is one of the application holography so at the end of this course matlab after engineering physics you will be able to understand the experimental evidence for the wave nature of light you will apply you will be able to apply the knowledge of light wave uh, to understand the fundamental of optics learn about the origin of x rays the dual nature with the classical physics <laughs> you will be able to know the concept of coherence will be able to understand the concept of laser select material for designing and construction and conduct the experiments and knowledge of physical interpretation and ability to apply maxwell equations in various field so this is the lecture thank you